The Jews are a nation governed by Jewish law, and therefore they have one legal system which governs the Jewish people, and they are bound together by a cultural unity. So while the Jews are speaking Persian and Aramaic and Babylonian and Arabic and whatever other language they are speaking, they always have Hebrew as part of their cultural heritage which they are able to read and to write and to speak also. And that is uh, another fascinating feature of Jewish history in general, that from the beginning to the present day, Hebrew has always been a living language. This nonsense that the Hebrew was dead and was revived in the 19th century is not true. It was always a living language. What Eliezer ben Yehuda did in the 20th century, when he wanted to make Hebrew, the spoken language of Israel, is to revive it as a spoken modern language in the 20th century. Because when you read documents written in the medieval period, it is a living language. It's not devoted just to rabbinical decrees and to religious laws. What they had in Babylon was a Jewish community with lawyers and judges who judged according to Jewish law. The rabbis are not what we consider clergymen. The rabbis were lawyers and judges. Their function was to govern the Jewish community. And they were rabbis by virtue of their knowledge of the law. I mean, you read the whole, in all the Talmud, students came and they studied law in the centers where there were Jewish schools of law. They attended the courts. They followed lawyers around. They observed them. They learned law by hands-on practice. And at a certain point, they may have been invited to try a case. And if they were found to be competent, they would be invited to try other cases. And then they might be given the recognition of the title of Rav. And then at a certain point, the community might say, you know, this guy should be a judge. So it was a growth in the knowledge of the law, which ultimately led to the building of a body of um, legal scholars who governed the Jewish community. And by the way, the Jewish government, self-government, was a government that was essentially a jurisprudence government, a, a judicial government. They governed themselves by virtue of the law as they interpreted it under given conditions and changing conditions. And what is interesting is to see how Jewish law incorporates elements of Babylonian law because they're living in Babylon. Jewish law in Jerusalem is different. That's why the two Talmuds that emerge, the Babylonian Talmud and the, and the Palestinian Talmud, are different in many ways because they're different with dealing with different geographical conditions.